Hello, welcome back. This is Dr. Liu at Li Time. Today, we talk about preservatives in hydrosol. Do we need preservatives in hydrosol? If you want to use preservatives, what are the preservatives that you can use in hydrosol? And what are the key factors you need to consider before you choose your preservatives? And then how do you quantify the performance or efficacy of the preservatives in hydrosol. Hydrosol is the herb extract made during the distillation. It made at the same time with essential oil. The difference is essential oil because they are very, very little amount, very little amount from the herb. For example, from the rose, 1,000 of the rose petals, you can make one drop of rose essential oil. So you normally make a larger quantity of the hydrosol during your making your essential oil. And essential oil, you not always can make essential oil, you know, depends on the size of your distiller. So because some of the herb has a very, very low oil content like a rose, jasmine, lemon balm. So you're going to need a huge amount of uh, this herb to make a small amount of essential oil. But uh, for some other herbs like lavender, rosemary, peppermint, uh, oregano, so you have a chance to make a small quantity of essential oil by using a small size of distiller. So hydrosol is on the other side, so you can always make hydrosol like rose water. Even you just have 10 pieces of rose flowers, you can still make a good amount, like 500 milliliter of high quality rose water. You can make lemon water, citrus, you know, hydrosol, lavender hydrosol, rosemary hydrosol. You can make almost all kinds of hydrosol from small amount of herbs by using a small scale distiller. Hydrosol normally has its pretty good shelf life. For most of the hydrosol, they have uh, over six months and even up to 18 months. So they have a pretty good shelf life. But there are a few things you need to be careful when you store your hydrosol. For homemade, fresh made hydrosol workshop, you know, fresh made hydrosol, it's okay just using the fresh made without the preservatives, but there are a couple things very important. First, you need a good sanitized containers. So you need the container be sanitized so you don't introduce the bad germs to the hydrosol. You know, during the distillation process, um, so the hot temperature from the water, the steam will clean up. It will kind of like a sanitization because it, steam is a sanitization method for most of materials. So it sanitizes it and then it keep the whole hydrosol clean. But it, when you bottle them, when you all in air, you know, the environment, you get a chance to be contaminated. So keep your environment clean, keep your bottle clean. This is one, the first step you want to take to make sure you have a high quality hydrosol. So the second one is about the storage. So when you have fresh made hydrosol, put in the fridge, it's definitely a good idea, but you don't have to. You just find a cool, no sunshine, no direct sunshine place and store them. That's also wonderful for the hydrosol storage. Of course, yet like I said, you know, fridge is definitely always a better options. But if you want to make a hydrosol, you know, for for sale, you know, for your products, you may need to consider the preservatives because, you know, the shipping, the storage and the customers, contaminations, all of those things, the temperature difference. So those can trigger some bad effect, including when you're making large quantity, right? The bottle may not be you know, very well sanitized. So that's the human error can happen. So you want to use the preservatives to keep your hydrosol safe. Now let's talk about the 
preservatives in this video, I give you two combinations for different uses. However, before I go to the detail, I need to tell you this is not like a, a guidance to, to you know, you can use exactly the same for your product. This is information I share with you based on the, you know, the research. So this is options. So you take on your own and you always need to check. Make sure your products will follow the good production procedure and then do the research, find the best recipe of preservatives for your products. You take care of your own business. So that's the, the, the goal of this video. Just want to share with you the information so you can use that for, you know, as one of the approach to make your best quality products. So when we are choose preservatives, there are a couple of factors is very important. First is the solubility. That means does it dissolve in water or oil? It depends on the products you're making. So for hydrosol, of course, is water. So you want to find water soluble preservatives. Second, what is the best pH, the working pH for the preservatives? So this is also important. Preservatives can help keep the product, uh, you know, avoid them go bad because of the mold, fungi, the yeast, bacteria. But uh, you need all the preservatives. They have their perfect working pH range. So in this video, I will tell you uh, two combinations. The first one is uh, potassium sorbate with citric acid. So potamica sorbet is a food grade preservative. It has been popularly used in the juice, fruit, you know, a lot of a lot of food. They use that canned food, use that to help keep the product safe during the storage. However, it, first it needs a good pH range. It's perfect at a lower than six and five is is better. So that's why we will add a bit of a citric acid to lower the pH. Even the hydrosol itself normally is acidic. It's less than, you know, around 6, 6.5. But adding a bit of a citric acid can lower the pH to the best range for the potassium sorbate. So this will be a good food grade preservatives for the hydrosol. So the second one, is combination of a sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate. So potassium sorbate is a good preservative, especially for the yeast and fungi, but it's not so powerful for bacteria. And a sodium benzoate is better in the bacteria reduction. They will manage, they will reduce the reproduction of the bacteria. So these two can make a wider protection for your hydrosol. You can also add a, a bit of a citric acid for the same reason, the pH, they both work at a more acidic range. So make more acidic can help them, help the preservative to work better, you know, for keeping the hydrosol uh, safer for a wider range applications. So we have a talk about these two combinations, the sorbate with citric acid and the benzoate sorbate and citric acid. So the first one is more like enclosed system. And it's if you are more leaning to the food drink side use of the hydrosol, you may think about that one. And for the second one, benzoate, sorbate and citric acid, they are more like a, a you know, they, they, they are food grade. They, all of those kind of uh, considered as a food grade uh, and a safe to use. But uh, benzoate, because they have uh, the risk when you mix with vitamin C, you can have a benzene that can cause cancer. So you can consider this as a cosmetic because the benefit of the benzoate is also meet the cosmetic preservatives as well. So you can think about these two combinations for different functions. 
So next video, the, I'll be a member video. I will show you how to do the, you know, the advocacy test, how to do the culture, and make sure your preservatives work well. And also have a blog. You can read the blog about their, the, the percentage of those uh, chemicals you can use in the hydrosol. And that should be also pretty helpful. And go visit uh, the blog uh, on our website, leadtimesteel.com. Okay, so today we talk about the preservatives. Do we need preservatives for the hydrosol? And what are the options we can use for hydrosol? And please let me know how you preserve your hydrosol, and uh, if, especially when you sell them, and uh, what are your questions, and uh, share your experience with us. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe the channel, become a member. This is Dr. Liu. See you next time.